one bullet. Her Majesty is exceptional. The fourth tail is there. Said, now who's addled in the air, eh? I should investigate would be the ravine, right? Okay. Just go investigate that ravine. That's what I need to do now. First, let's get that shrine. Just so we have a uh, good more health. Go, morale's up. This place, we'll go here, go along and we'll check that cave. First, let's see if they're gonna do any upgrades. I think really I can put my deck because I need more space in the deck. Yes, Your Grace. It's time I attended. I'll retalk the boat. There's nothing I can upgrade right now. On their way to the capital, Meave and company happened one fine day upon a lone rider. Had I been at her side, I would immediately have recognized his passionate gaze and altogether chivalrous mien. Identify yourself, sir, and your intent. Ache of Denel, I am dubbed, and my design I never conceal. The good book says the world is a garden which the gods once conferred upon man. And we men have this garden neglected. In consequence, all manner of filth has made its lair here. Drowners, ghouls, and other kobolds. I have sworn ne'er to rest until the day when, with the God's help, I have rid the world of these beasts and pests. I wander all lands, seeking out evil and facing it in mortal combat. Who do we spy? A knight errant? Hmm. Just as likely a madman. How goes your hunt? Caught the trail of any monster? Monster? Too fair a term by far. An exceptionally vile worm has made its lair in nearby caverns. 
It is said to be the very distillation of filth, a slither in horror, a melange of the macabre. Its head, that of a wild cat of Ophir. It's more full of spiked teeth. The wings of a bat it is said to have, the tail of a scorpion, and from it, a thick venom drips. Learned men call this variety a manticore, or mardiacore. Perhaps it will be most prudent, then, to send for a witcher. A witcher? <laughs> Soulless automatons they are, all, feeding on common folk's fears. What they demand gold to do, I perform without demand of any coin. Sir Egg, far be it from me to discourage you. Your endeavor is noble, no doubt. But from what I have heard, manticores are exceedingly dangerous beasts. To defeat this filth alone could be a difficult task, I'll not deny. Yet try it I must, for it is what I have sworn before the gods. Hmm. We shall help you find and fight the Manticore, provided you then pledge to help us fight an even fiercer and filthier beast. Of course, my lady. Yet what manner of horror is it? A vipper? A griffin? A drake of some rare form? Were it only. Tis a beast of a thousand heads, covered in black armor, its fire consuming whole villages. Noble lady, I know bestiaries only in parts, yet I've seen some of the world, and never have I heard of such a terror. You need but look about you, and spot Nilfgaard's legions. Devastating. But you must forgive me, Your Grace. This struggle between realms is not one to which I can lay a hand. A manticore. How great is its appetite? How many men does it fell, in a moon, let us say? It changes. At a time when the horror broods, it may be as many as twenty. I see. As now you must. Nilfgaard, in my capital, could mean as many as twenty thousand felled. You live to fight evil, injustice, do you not? You can fight none greater than by doing so at my side. The Manticore, Your Grace, must fall first. As to what happens later, I shall need to consult the good book and petition the gods. Agreed, so be it. This monster, where lies its lair? Where does it prowl? To the north, my queen. A few leagues on. In the ravine, eh? Not a scrap. There's also a quest over here on my way to the capital. That's probably an ambush. Not a scrap. Not a whole village. Hallowed mother. Look upon. Tis in these ravines. The beast is near. At the furthest depth of the winding, gloomy canyon, scouts found the maw of a great cavern. Among the boulders outside it, whitening bones lay strewn. Ake dismounted and drew his blade. By the God's grace, we found the beast's lair, he said, lifting his gaze to the heavens. We need them but to extend their favor as we battle the filth.
Meave cast a critical eye at her shield. Wood clad in leather and thin plate. Enough to stop a sword, certainly, but would it protect her from a beast's raging blow? Noticing her hesitation, Reynard approached the queen and said, Your grace, none will utter a disparaging word should you step back. But they will think them, replied Meave. And that's bad enough. The war has begun. I can't appear weak to my fighting men. Without awaiting an answer, Meave strode into the cave. The rest of the company followed, equally full of fear and faith in their queen and commander. Moments later, a great and powerful roar filled the cavern. Well, let's begin the battle. I'm coming, I'm coming. Venom. 
Abolista, your command. Try to win them all, but you won't. Her Majesty is exceptional. You must sweat like a swine in that jacket. With Ake at their side, the Lyrians fell on the matter. Later, it was said, the beast's dying wail, multiplied and strengthened as it passed through the caverns, could be heard as far as Spala. Your Grace, many monarchs have I met in my time, yet none proved as virile in battle as did your Majesty. Virile? I dislike the term. Seems not to suit a woman. I prefer valiant. Yet grateful I am for the compliment. Now pray reveal, have you made your decision? Will you swear to serve me? Are you prepared to take an oath? I am not, Your Grace. I can serve only the gods. Yet, I do believe them to be on your side as one unjustly and treacherously attacked. Thus I see nothing wrong in assisting you. Then I am content and welcome you in my ranks, Sir Ake of Donnell. The knight-errant bowed low from the waist. So low, in fact, the gambeson neath his mail creaked. Meave could only hope he would battle Nilf Guardians as boldly as he faced beasts. Not a scrap! So I guess we can start going this way. Let's see what's over here.
one of them golden stones belongs on the side of my own ship. No pissing in the fire, what? No shitting next to tents. No shouting at dawn. You break the rules, I break your legs. <laughs> Make for good prisoners, good slaves. T they got black shells, but their meat and size red. Milf. One evening, soldiers brought before me the elf she had saved from a lynching. It seemed he had been the fiend who had poisoned the water barrels from which several soldiers had drunk, then suffered and died. Yes, I did it. And I regret it not one bit. See, the elf. Nilfgaardian, Temerian, some brute from Lyria, you Dwan are all alike. I detest you. All of you, your filth for what you wrought with my brethren. I'm proud. I am that even a few of your kind perished at my hand. Hail and Shay. Meave pursed her lips into a thin white line. Raynard knew the expression. It did not bode well. I should drag you to the capital, hang you high in the market square. Meave said through gritted teeth. Yet this you would want, am I right? For your folk to speak of you? For your folk to remember? Well, you shan't have it. You'll hang here, in the middle of nowhere, with but crows to witness it and then pick at your eyes. It was a summary execution. No sentence was read, no last wish observed. The elf's corpse then hung long at the roadside, as none came forth to claim and bury it. Welcome you home, your majesty. Prince Willem awaits your return, Your Grace.
I see you found the mess tent. How's the ale? Not too warm, I hope. Tis not for me to say, Your Majesty. My tankard holds but milk of the goat. Milk? A witless prank. I shall tell the quartermaster at once what I think of such... Unnecessary, Your Grace. I called for the beverage. Is that so? Well then. The good book states clearly. The shadow of spirits obscureth light most true, and leadeth thee from the path of virtue. Right. I suppose there's something to it. My soul sings to hear your affirmation, Your Grace. If ever you wish to discuss the good book and the wisdoms contained therein, hesitate not to find me. Certainly, I shall remember that. Your crusade against monsters. Have you been at it long? Come next Bellatane, it will be twenty years, Your Grace. Though, there was one extended interruption. For what reason? Had you grown weary of the Knight Errant's life? Not in the least. Never shall I cease in my quest to cleanse the world of filth and abominations. But at times... At times evil puts up rather a good fight. I ventured forth to slay a dragon once. A gold one, as it were. Calling itself Villa Tretelmeft, or the like. Its very name, as is evident, a vile toil for the tongue, and wafting wickedness. A great many mercenaries embarked on the hunt, lured by the promise of coin in heaps. The Crinford Reavers, Yarp and Zigrin, and a band of dwarves, even, curse the word, a witcher, one Yennefer. Most lecherous sorceress at his side. Hey, wait, 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 wait. You're talking about Geralt, right? A great many mercies embark on the hand, learn to promise a coin. He the censured reaver, Yarkin Zergin, a band of dwarves. Even curse the word a witcher and one Yennefer, a most lecherous sorceress at his side. Wait, you're talking about Geralt of Rivia, aren't you? Hmm, that name I've heard. But at the deciding moment, when the beast challenged all, I alone emerge to face it. Alas, though, shame burns me to admit it. I return from the battle upon my shield. Figuratively. Literally. I return to pieces. For two years, I lay in the temple of Melitale in Alanda. Mother Neneke, God's protector, nursing me back to full health. And only when I could once more grip my sword did I return to the path chosen. And the dragon? What was its fate? Some claim it flew off to Zeracania, though it very well might yet lurk here, awaiting the opportune moment to terrorize the folk of the north again. Farewell, Ake. I wonder if we'll see that dragon. Should I go for the main quest? Let's go to the main quest. And I go up here. Home at last, Your Grace. Mm-hmm. We shall not enjoy it long, I fear. Soon we must face the black clads in the field. Yet a moment's peace we will have. After that drubbing you gave them at Dravagrad, they'll wish to rethink their strategy. Looks like I found mostly everything I could find in this section. Continue. Neve had ridden out of Lyria in early spring, her retinue modest, as none larger was needed for the brief summit of sovereigns. She returned now to her capital, 
at the head of an army that dragged behind it bandits and Nilfgaardian prisoners in chains. The whole city came out to greet her. Its traders, craftsfolk, priests. Also, her eldest son and heir, Prince Willem. A boy who, it seemed, might never be prepared to rule. Meave and Willem rode side by side past the cheering throngs, their faces frozen in regal smiles. It was not until they reached the castle stables that they found a corner in which to speak freely, candidly. Welcome home, Mother. Content I am to see you, to be sure. And I'm happy to see you. Though I dare say I'd have been much happier to witness you leading an army towards Dravagrad. Willem, I trusted you. Left the realm in your care. Indeed. And I, in turn, did my utmost to choose the best course for... Willem, don't be so damned courtly. There's no one else here. My son. Nilfgaard has invaded our home. We're at war. When rulers don't strive and don't choose, when rulers grab their swords and shields and ride out to defend their subjects. You didn't let me finish. All right. Say what you wanted to, please. I feared I'd be hasty, Mother, and I didn't want to be. When we got word of the invasion, the lords convened at the castle. They demanded I hear them out. They wanted to give me counsel. If I'd rushed into the field to confront the foe, I'd, I'd have been half blind to the situation, not known all the options I had at my disposal. A ruler never knows all the options, yet he must decide and act nonetheless. I need to prepare. I'll see you at the Council of Peers. And indeed she did, when the Peers convened in the throne room. Surrounded by animal hides and Zeracanian tapestries, the Lord stood in tense silence, awaiting the Queen. When her figure filled the doorway, they fawningly prostrated themselves. We've myriad matters to resolve, so I trust you're well rested. Whatever the case, I've no doubt we shall meet the dawn afore we're done. Firstly, we must ask assistance. Pen a letter to King Demavend. Scribe, take this down. Dear... What? Uncle? Cousin? Blast. Again. I, Meave, by the God's grace, sovereign of Rivia and... Your grace? Mother? The peers and I, we've come to propose another solution. Yes. Out with it. We wish to acknowledge Nilfgaard's authority, pledge fealty to the Emperor. Oh, you guys are fucking traitors. Oh man, fucking Caldwell and Willem. Are you serious? We're being betrayed by Willem and Caldwell, of all people? I beg your pardon. The black-clad hordes outnumber our forces manifold, and they're far better equipped. We stand not the slightest chance against them in open. You will not lecture me about Nilfgaard's army, my son. All you know of them you garnered from coloured renderings, whereas I faced them at Dravagrad. I faced them and crushed them. But your grace, the losses. For this fleeting victory in which you delight, how many of your subjects had to perish? Bend a knee afore the Emperor, and you shall spare thousands. Nay, never! Understood, Caldwell. Not ever! Oh god, Meave is angry. Meave is angry! I'd hoped to persuade you, but it seems I've failed. Nonetheless, the die's been cast. We've signed the accord with Nilfgaard. Our noble lord stand with me. The blood left Meave's face. She had realized her son, who had ever professed to detest politics and shirked his duties as crown prince, had just stabbed her in the back, as had her entire court. What is this? 
Treason to my eyes. The gallows is what awaits you. Villain rules Lyria now. And should you not acquiesce and approve the accord, I fear only you, milady, shall have the pleasure to meet the hangman. Don't get ahead of yourself, Caldwell. My mother will not be harmed. Not one hair on her head. Understood? Confine the queen to the tower. You err deeply, my son. The queen was confined to a cell. Gilded armor she had traded for a simple robe. A courtly retinue for a swarm of rats. She was the very picture of misery. At the window of her cell, gripping the bars, Meave stood powerless, her anger so great she wept and wailed. Her Lyria was free no more. Have I come at a bad time? Demons take you, Caldwell. You've long been at this scheme, haven't you? You left the strays of Sparla to roam the realm, to forage, so that I would have to look to them. And thus gained your cohorts the time they needed to complete Lyria's sail to Nilfgaard. You've seen through it all, that's clear. After fucking the fucking well, he's a fucking traitor. But still. <laughs> Villain. You turned him. How? The boy's not fit to wear the crown. Hasn't sufficient wit, no valor. I know this. You know this. Just... he knows it not. Willem fancied himself a statesman, which terribly to prove he was one. I made it possible. I've been amply rewarded, I have. Palatine since just yesterday, in fact. You'll have neither my blessing nor congratulations. Sorry to disappoint you. I seek neither. I've come for another reason. To bid you adieu. Willem does not seek your death. Does not even fathom it, as you well know. Moreover, his resolve will wilt in time, and he'll wish to free you. So, come the morn, when the young king rides out to pledge fealty for General Epdahi, you shall use your bed linens to hang yourself. <laughs> I see. You wish to see me bow before you, lie prostrate, beg you for mercy. Plow yourself with a pike, Caldwell. And you needn't send your thugs. I'll not falter nor hesitate. I'll take my own life. Adieu, your grace. And use your last evening wisely. Meave felt a rush of despair, yet bit her lip to mute any weeping. No, she would not give Caldwell the satisfaction. Morning arrived with the sound of footsteps in the corridor. Meave rose from her cot and stood in the center of her cell. The, the Duke of Dogs? Titles seem senseless under the circumstances, don't you think? Let's forgo them. I'm Gascon. Has Caldwell sent you? To kill me? A no and a no. Actually, you're free. How shall I put this? That cad, Count Caldwell, used yours truly and the strays as bait in a scheme aimed at kicking your shapely backside off your throne. Now, I'm hardly vindictive. First to forgive, in fact. Take your threat to send me to the gallows. Forgotten already. Yet being played for a fool, I cannot abide. So when the strays freed me, I knew what I'd do to spite the Count before I disappeared. I'd free you. That's to say, on one condition. You've got to request it of me, my lady. Courteously. For my realm I will do this, and much, much more. Even bower for a brigand. Thus I beg you, Gascon, Duke of Dogs, grant me my freedom. Ha! Incredible! I've lived to see someone grovel with dignity. A 
true ruler you've got to be. You are free. I'm grateful. Now please let me pass. I must get to the city jail at once. Would you look at this woman? Free her from one prison, she flies off to the next. They hold Reynard there. And if I've any ally left, anyone who's not betrayed me, it's him. I must get him out. Hold, my lady. Unarmed. Alone. Have I any other option? Hmm. In a sense. See, they locked a few strays in the city pits, too. Got a common cause, I'd say. Care to join forces? The Queen took Gascon up on his offer. Then she, Gascon, and the strays snuck through the city to its dungeon. Reynard had not wavered for a moment in his devotion to the Queen. Never the slouch, he had also not lost any time. I've inquired among the other arrested soldiers. Many are prepared to fight, even die at your side, Your Grace. Seems they may yet get their chance. But now we must flee. All of us. Yet in leaving the jail, the company ran into trouble. When Caldwell's cutthroats had failed to find Meave in her cell waiting for her secret execution, they had informed the Count. He, in turn, dispatched patrols into the streets. The Queen and her cohorts ran into one such unit. Blast! We shan't help them now. Two arms! Gascon? Bloody hell, where'd he get to? Your Grace, we must make haste. Caldwell's roused the whole city by now. There's a time to reap, a time to sow. leave you just like that, did you? Honestly, I did. Again and again and again. <laughs> the thing about slings, they hide well. Guarantee do we have that they won't stab us in the back? I smell a leak. Margarita told us of this. We'll catch them all. Now, to ever pay off these school loans. This harvest 
We'll be reaping black clad hands. <laughs> As you wish, my lady. <laughs> Spirits willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. Give me a time. Hey, to your command. <laughs> You mad? Don't shake that! Cursey traders. The chase is on! Sod it. Sod it all. Your Grace, we must make haste. Caldwell's roused the whole city by now. Gotta listen to me, old lady. <laughs> Cursed traitors. <laughs> this harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Sod it. Sod it all. <laughs> My spirit's willing and how, but he's dumb. Didn't think I'd leave you just like that, did you? Honestly, I did. <laughs> Don't lie, this. You mad? Don't shake that! Curse you, traitors. Ha! Your Grace, what guarantee do we have that they won't stab us in the back? Is a waste of time for one like me. Yeah, yeah. Naturally, at once. This could hurt. Left, right, left, right. <laughs> I'll relieve you of that pouch.
Give me a time. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? Again and again and again. <laughs> To reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. <laughs> Abolista, your command. <sighs> Don't tell I'll ever pay off these school yeah. loans. Gone. Bloody hell, where'd he get to? Your Grace, we must make haste. Coldwell's roused the whole city by now. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Every rib's a thief. I'd leave you just like that, did you? Honestly, I did. An army's a waste of time for one like me. Think about slings, they hide well. Sod it all. Abolista, your command. Don't like this. Your Grace, what guarantee do we have that they won't stab us in the back? We'll catch them all! Left, right. Left, right. Catch! I'm a monster. What 
you looking at? <laughs> Cursed traitors. <laughs> I smell a leak. Again and again and again. Hey. Sod it. Sod it all. An army's a waste of time for one like me. One bolt. The chase is on! As you command. <sighs> Doubt I'll ever pay off these school loans. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. I thank you, Gascon. You and your men, for your aid. Tis now, my lady. Strays never say no to a proper brawl. No brawl this was. Sun rising against mother. Lyrian striking at Lyrian. I fear a blood war's begun. Come now. Seems to me the war's ended. Your realm's lost to Nilfgaard. You've no army to speak of. Then I shall assemble a new one. And with it have Coldwell hanged, and drive Nilfgaard back across the Yoruga. <laughs> You're mad! How will you find the men? Riding from hamlet to hamlet, speaking from atop a crate? No. I shall find them in Edurn. I've a favor to call in with King Demavend, and I'll sway volunteers to my cause on the way. Well, you've your first willing warriors already. How so? We've nothing left in Lyria. Our hideouts are compromised, Caldwell's sure to set a price on our heads, and Nilfgaardians roam the land in numbers. Besides, I'll be right tickled to see proud Queen Me fighting elbow to elbow with a bandit she'd wish to hang just a half day afore. Well, it is said my foe's foe is my friend. And I'd be a fool to turn down assistance now. No matter who offers. So be it. Very high minded of you, my lady. So, shall we shake on? Nay? Well then, the high road beckons.
Though first we must escape the city with our lives. Follow me. Lyria was hers no more. Meave now had to flee her capital and realm as quickly as she could. Wont to travel the city streets in a gilded carriage, the Queen now saw them from a slightly different vantage point. Ugh. Is this the only way? Are you quite certain? The Queen is a common fugitive now, so she'd do better to pinch her nose and whinge not at all. At long last, Meave reached the gate. Yet this she found shut tight, locked and guarded. Gods be damned! Easy, Your Grace. Nothing we can't solve with a quiver full of quarrels. Those are our men. They were, Reynard, were. Gascon's raiders were poised to loose their bolts, but were thwarted when the Queen stepped out in front of them. What she... Your Majesty, I've orders to arrest your grace. Place me in irons, then. Please understand, I, I haven't a choice. Fear not. You'll be rewarded by Coldwell in Nilfgaardian Florens. The captain's head dropped. His cheeks burned crimson. Go, your grace. Flee now, but only to return. Remember this, Gascon. I'm no fugitive. I'm a queen, robbed of her rightful crown. And though I may need to venture to the world's end before I return, I shall have it back. <laughs>